So this is the Autumn Palace. It certainly does resemble the, resemble the Winter Palace. I've been waiting, sir. Huh? Aren't you that Harry Butts guy? Harry Butts. That's great. Wrong! I'm Laurice Donum, a very famous artist that everyone appreciates. Never mind that, detective. Your report, if you please. Roger that, sir. Uh, we discovered a used gas burner during our investigation. The nozzle was still warm when we found it, so it may be related to the incident. Was it used to heat something? Interesting. They made something melt. Is that not always there on the ground? It was probably used by the person who set off the poison gas. The poison gas was released when someone lifted the lid off that case, sir. Hmm. The Pisces sculpture. Huh? Seems like you know about it, sir. Well then, do you know what the sculpture next to it is? Since we're in the Autumn Palace, I would probably be the Capricorn sculpture. As expected, Mr. Edgeworth, I thought it was Taurus myself. I was thrown off as it was covered by this weird cloth. Threads and cloth? I wonder what it's doing here. Evidence from the IS-7 incident. Weird. No matter what it is, or no matter what it is, or how it got here. The sculptures in this room are all covered with this fluorescent cloth. And because they're hidden, it makes me want to see them even more. Let's take a look. I'll just get this cloth off. Wow, they're beautiful. So that's Aquarius. That's Sagittarius. Was that right? You don't think... The transformation Larry saw was, in fact, the moment the cloth wrapped around the lower half of Pisces fell. See, Edgy! It wasn't a mirage or a mistake after all! Ugh. Hey, Miles, there sure is something strange about this room. It looks exactly the same as the Winter Palace we were in just a moment ago. Yes, I agree. Perhaps the sculptures were hidden to make it look like the Winter Palace. If you wrap the cloth around the lower half of the Pisces sculpture, it looks like the Gemini. Capricorns are half fish too. Hide the lower half and it resembles Taurus. The remaining two, which couldn't be altered with trickery, were covered up. The Old Palace was made to look like the Winter Palace. So it seems, Mr. Shields. Looks like we'll need to conduct an investigation of the Autumn Palace too. Mr. the best and Judge Courtney. Hey, 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 you guys again. What? This is a problem. You see, this is my crime scene. Mr. Edgeworth, it seems that my power is insufficient. If you're here, then it would appear that you still haven't understood my warnings. Yeah. Furthermore, you know full well your reckless actions will cause trouble for that detective. In the name of the goddess of law, I must pass judgment. Uh, you got it all wrong, pal. I was the one who asked Mr. Edgewood to investigate. Really? <laughs> well then, Flatfoot, I'll have to do that. That? Yeah, that. Er, uh, right. Cut your salary. <laughs> Looking forward to your next payday. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> I control another person's life. <laughs> uh, you're the last person I want cutting my salary, pal. Hold it, the best. I'm only cooperating with the police as a witness to this incident. Detective Gumshoe is not to blame. Hmm, so that's how it is. Well then, should I be raising his salary? No, that's not what I mean, meant. But it would be really nice to get my salary raised. I like it a lot. I'm, I'm so hungry all the time. Your mercy is deeply moving, Sebastian. But 
past transgressions must lead to future judgment. Ah! Don't hit me with the big hammer! Prosecutor Edgeworth and all in his company depart at once from this holy sight! But, but that's... we only just got here! The one given the goddess of law's blessing for this incident was Sebastian! In other words, Mr. DeBest is the prosecutor in charge of this case. That's right, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening performance is over. Besides, I've already got my eyes set on the culprit. What? <laughs> Who, pal? Well, naturally, that artist. Hmm. Me? Hey, wh what's going on, Edgy? Don't ask me, I can't understand his reasoning. If you can't understand how the best prosecutor thinks, it simply shows how incomparable you are. It seems he doesn't know what incomparable me even means. That's right, Sebastian. Prosecutor Edgeworth is quite incapable. Um, yes, he is incapable. He cannot wear a cape. She just nonchalantly corrected him. That was so smooth, I barely noticed. Don't underestimate my intelligence gathering skills. I just came from the infirmary and asked the doctor there about the cause of the poison gas. And what was the cause? Uh, some normal substance. What was its name again? Hold on a second. Uh, call the doctor to make sure. is on the phone, I'll answer for him. In that case, why didn't you tell us before he called? The poison gas was caused by the mixing of two different types of chemicals. Their names are normalium and fatalium. Real chemicals that ha exist in the real world. Normalium, the most boring chemical there is. So what are those two chemicals exactly? Normalium is a red liquid that's commonly used in everyday products. You know, shampoo, dish soap, you can get it, use it to make gruel, you just dump it in, it's so boring and normal. It can be found in paint and detergent, among other things, but it's not toxic by itself. So you're saying that it's a substance readily available to anyone? Yes, but fatalium on the other hand, oh no, it's not so easy to obtain. His name sure sounds dangerous. What's he used for? It is the active ingredient of a white pesticide known as Megatoxin X. I'm pretty sure that's what you use to kill the Powerpuff Girls. Fatalium itself also has a deep white color, but it's not readily sold in stores. It's nearly impossible to obtain domestically. Right now, we are looking into how this chemical was obtained. Poison gas data. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I finally found the names of those chemicals. Judge Courtney has already told us. We don't need to hear it again. What? Eh. Fine then. I'll cut to the chase. You know that normalium from the poison gas is also used in paint, right? Today, out of everyone who visited the art gallery, the only one carrying paint. Da da da. -da was that artist? You're treating me as the culprit just cause of that? I, it's an art gallery. I, I also have bows on my shoulders and that's not a reason to arrest me so I'm innocent. Rest my case. I object to the red paint on the palette you're carrying. Hey, Edgy, uh, don't you think this prosecutor's kind of an idiot? Indeed, I mean even next to you it's pretty rough. Although I've only known him for a short time, his logic is always absurd. Hey! Don't ignore me! You can't talk about me behind my back right in front of my face! It's alright, Sebastian. They're only doing it because they're afraid of you. Like the first star to appear at night, show us reason that shines the best. The, the first star shines best! Not bad! Hey, you guys better listen up too! Mr. DeBest's shining logic. Okay. That artist was the first to discover the victim, so naturally he's the best 
subject. <laughs> the poison gas was caused by normalium, a chemical found in paint, right? As he was carrying paint near the victim, he would have had the best chance. The paint, along with being the first witness, that pretty much proves he's the culprit. So, uh, what do you think, Justine? We can't ignore the possibility. Well then, Mr. Artist, please tell us the truth. Did you leave red paint at the crime scene? Or else, did you cause the poison gas to go off? The only thing I leave behind is my bond of love with you. Because you're kind of pretty. And would you like to go on a date? Maybe to a movie. Maybe to a museum. Did you know I'm an artist? Please watch what you say. My gavel is already prepared to declare you guilty. Objection! Please pay no heed to this man's statements. Objection! Hey, hey, you guys! Ignoring my reasoning just because it's flawless won't do you any good. Mr. Edgeworth, if you've already admitted defeat, you should take your leave. Hum, even though I don't really have time to deal with your ridiculous reasoning. I will, however, meticulously press every individual thing you've said just to watch how much your testimony changes. That artist was the first to discover the victim, so naturally he's the best subject. I, that's my name also. Indeed, at first glance, this man seems suspicious. However... At first glance? Uh, what's that first all of a sudden? You can't use a first against my first. I already used that word. You, are you trying to steal my spot as the star that shines best? Because I'm the best. Huh? Would that make me the best artist? Am I... You like me? Right? Is that what you said? I'm just trying to... I'm just barely following this conversation. Larry, don't make this any more confusing than it already is. This is the best. Continue your reasoning. Now. The poison gas was caused by normalium, a chemical found in paint, right? But... But that's the easy one to find. It can be found lots of other places. Yes, apparently normalium is used in many everyday products. Right, so the red paint is definitely suspicious. Normalium. Normalium makes it possible. Normalium. It's in our medical equipment. Normalium. It's in your shoes. But it's also used in things other than paint, right? I guess you have a point. What do you think, Justine? That's right. Normalium is also used in detergent, for example. In other words, it might not have been paint that caused the gas. That's not true! Let me, let me finish my reasoning! You can't just, just cause that's what I'm basing everything else on, does it? As he was carrying paint in the victim, he would have had the best chance. But the entire room was filled with poison, not just the victim. Even if paint is the cause of the poison gas, that doesn't mean he is guilty. <laughs> well then, if the paint is not the cause, that doesn't mean he's innocent either. Yes, but... Now he's just trying to sound clever. Mimicking what Mr. Edwards says won't make you look cool at all. Okay, please don't make my statements look bad. Now that it's about time to wrap up my shining logic. Paint, along with being the first witness, that pretty much proves he's the culprit. Hold it. Yep. All done. Do you truly claim that Larry is the culprit based on just that? Huh? You got a problem with that? If you have a problem, then present evidence. Mr. Edward, it looks like he really wants you to do that. Indeed, then I will do as he wishes and present evidence. It seems he doesn't pay much attention to what other people are saying. There is a clear contradiction in Mr. DeBest's logic. Why do you even bother making the phone call? I'll finish this quickly. This is a waste of time. Okay, so probably it was caused by normalium, but not just normalium. It's normalium and fatalium that causes a chemical reaction. I'm pretty sure that's what we get him on. Objection! Yeah. 
Having Normalium alone is not sufficient. Mr. the Best, your logic is more akin to a shooting star than a shining star. <laughs> it shines the best, like a shooting star, right? It's also doomed. It may shine brightly for a brief moment, but then it burns itself out. The poison gas originated from inside the glass case of the Pisces sculpture. Exactly! So that's where the artist set off the gas, right? Right? He used the normalium in his red paint! As your senior, let me give you one piece of advice. Listen to the explanations of others. The poison gas was caused by mixing both normalium and fatalium together. The normalium contained in the red paint is not enough by itself. Uh, really? But I thought I heard that normalium caused the fatality! Don't tell me you just misheard the forensic report! D darn it! By the time Larry discovered the victim, the room was already filled with poison gas. It is time for you to realize how incapable you really are! Hey! What do you mean by incapable? I'm... I'm not... I'm not inculpable or... You tried to use that word earlier and you still don't know what it means? He means to say you are lacking in ability. Incidentally, inculpable has a completely different meaning. I get it. You're making fun of me again, aren't you? Well, haha, <laughs> joke's on you. I don't understand, and thus I'm not offended. I'm merely saying you're incapable in your investigation. Overruled! Before you insult Sebastian, I still have some doubts about your own statement. What kind of doubts? For all we know, Mr. Artis could have simply entered the Autumn Palace at an earlier time. That's technically true, but you're just speculating. Moreover, do you have evidence that the red paint is unrelated to the case? The most important thing now is not the red paint. The red paint is just a red herring. The red normalium and the white fatalium. Exactly how were these two substances mixed? I believe that is our main concern. Naturally. It was Sebastian's job to investigate that. Were it not for your interference, you would have found that out by now. I never intended to interfere. On the contrary, I'd like to cooperate. Don't tell me you're going to say you know the cause of the poison gas. How the poison gas started. I have something that may shed some light on this matter. Sebastian, do not fall for his bluff. Come now, it's fine! Really, let's hear what he's come up with! If you say so, Sebastian... Come on, show us! How did the poison gas start? I think that we are actually seeing right here, this is not blood, this is normalium. The normalium is actually melting down into, and you can actually see another little puddle down there, that's the gas that it's making. So there's something in the sketch. Larry saw how the gas started. Take that! Surely you're not saying that this was the cause of poison gas? A piece of paper? Paper's not made of normalium. Or is it? Everything's made of normalium. Hmm. It seems even you've noticed it. Duh! It really stands out! Those red tears that Larry saw were undoubtedly normalium. Huh? Wait a second! If those were chemicals, does that mean a ghost set off the poison gas? I don't have time to play along with him. The red tears of normalium could not have triggered the poison gas by itself. That red liquid was mixed inside the case to create the poison gas. What? Where do you see evidence the chemicals were mixed? That can also be seen in this sketch. Here is the evidence. Where were they mixed? You can see the pink down here of the red and white coming together. Making beautiful, beautiful pink. A pink liquid can be seen flowing out from under the case of the Pisces sculpture. This is proof that the two chemicals were mixed. Hold on a second. I still don't get it. How does this show that Normalium and Fatalium were mixed? Since we have a self-proclaimed artist here, I'll let him explain. 
Larry, you fancy yourself an artist, so you should know about the most basic color theory that there possibly could ever be, right? What do you add to red to make pink? Don't take me for a fool, Edgy! I'll have you know I graduated from middle school! You added white to red to make pink. It's common knowledge! Well, technically there's rose pink, baby pink, several others. You could also add basically any other light color. Like if you added a little bit of yellow in there, I mean, it would kind of shift it towards orange, but I mean... That's enough! Now do you understand, Mr. The Best? Ah, that's how it is! By mixing red normalium with white fatalium. You get a pink liquid! Yes, exactly. Took him long enough. Hmm, I see. Looks like Mr. The Best finally gets it. Overruled! Prosecutor Edgeworth, you have merely presented one possibility. Do we really know if the color was the result of the two chemicals mixed together? Maybe we could get some forensics and actually look at it and not have a weird, stupid speculation case in the middle of the crime scene. What about that, Miss Judge? Furthermore, this sketch was drawn by the suspect. I cannot put much faith into it. I just painted what I saw. How could that be a lie? Mr. Artist, I did not permit you to speak. Uh, so cold. That's part of a charm. I just... Oh, it makes me want to find a way to warm her up. Of course, I intend to bring the truth to light immediately. Overruled! Would not be wise to jeopardize your position even further. Aren't you going to answer my question from before? How do you know that Mr. Artist did not enter the Autumn Palace? If you cannot prove this, there is no room for you to argue any further. Hey, couldn't we find that out if we talked to the victim, pal? The victim, Dean Rostovia, remains unconscious and in critical condition. Uh, that's right. Sorry, I just wanted to be part of the conversation. I haven't talked in like half an hour. Well then, Sebastian, we'll be investigating the crime scene now. All of you, please vacate the premises. Uh, I said hold it. If you were to take a stand in court, you'd cause a lot of trouble for the presiding judge. Is there something you would like to say, Mr. Artist? Uh, hold your horses, Miss Cool Beauty, who I love now. My name is Justine Courtney. Please don't address me by such a strange title. Oh, you finally told me your name. Pleased to meet you, Justine. <laughs> Justine, we're best friends now. I'm Laurice Donham, but you can call me Laurice. By the way, next place I'm going, I'm gonna name drop you as my girlfriend. Because Mandy doesn't actually talk to me. Mr. Artist, please get to the point. I just remembered something I haven't had a chance to say yet. When I first got to this room, it was locked, so I couldn't go in. But then that old dude just suddenly fell through the door. Here, the palace rooms can be locked from the inside, but just because you say it was so, doesn't mean the door was locked. Without proof, your statement holds no value. Objection! Well, why not Uncle Ray prove it for you? What? After all, we can confirm the room was locked too. Right, Miles? Yes, I remember as well. <clears> hmm, <throat> the winner palace should be... Huh? It's locked up. That's odd. They've already opened the museum. Until the gas had break, no one could have entered into this room. Perhaps the suspect entered the room with the victim during the gas outbreak. As you can see, this man did not inhale any of the gas. If you examine his belongings, you'll find he wasn't carrying a gas mask either. Is that so? Well then. I have no choice but to agree. That was easier than I expected. Anyway, I presume this clears up any suspicion surrounding Larry. It seems Mr. De Best's logic was off once again. Well, <laughs> not exactly. I just didn't have enough information. That is all. De 
Therefore, my reasoning was just before its time. He sure has a grand way of saying that things didn't work out for him. In that case, there is one more suspect who has yet to take the stand. Mr. Artist, you are free to go. Huh? Oh, but I wanted to talk to you a little more. Justy, just a little bit longer for the rest of our lives, because I'm proposing I'm getting down on one knee. Overruled. Get out. Never talk to me again. Uh, you called me to please be memorized, mesmerized all the more. I, I, I. This other suspect is a pharmacist by the name of Delicia Scones. Artist to obtain the fatalium from Negatoxin X, 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 X. But a pharmacist may have knowledge of how to do that. She's a pharma. She's a pharmacist. I guess we knew that, right? The court will now take a ten-minute recess. Sebastian, it would be best if we brought her in quickly. Uh, best if we brought her in quickly. <laughs> Sounds good. Leave it to me. If you say something's the best, then I have to do it. Hey, Flatfoot! Keep up the investigation! Uh, got it. Don't tell me. Judge Courtney suspected her from the very beginning. So Mr. Best's logic wasn't any help at all. Judge Courtney, just what is she thinking? To be continued. Maybe we'll find out what she's thinking, what kind of crazy business she's got up her sleeves. Long and flowy as she points them out and then hits us with a hammer. Find out next time, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't by now. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.